What's up, everybody? This is Jason from EO7 Media and Night Owls Media. And today we are talking about a question I just got on a video for my best settings for Rode Wireless Go 2. So we are talking about these bad boys today. That's right. I've done videos on this for uh, two, three years ago, and I've been a big fan of them. And uh, every time I get a comment, I always comment back. Uh, if I have a question in there, like if someone has a question for me, I try to answer it as best as I can. Now, this video is not going to be highly produced. I'm not even gonna edit. I'm just gonna try and answer this video because I was thinking this person wrote me a question and I thought, hey, do I spend 20 minutes actually typing this out or do I make a video that could help them and hopefully help someone else in the process? So today we're gonna to be talking about these bad boys. These are the Wireless Go 2 system and if you notice like mine have like they're all black because I don't like advertising for companies that I'm not affiliated with if I'm not getting paid why would I have this on a set even if it's on like a, a vlog or like a podcast or something I'm not going to advertise for a company that doesn't pay me so I spent like 20 bucks on these rubber covers freaking fantastic I love them I love them I love them anyway not only does it block it but it also protects it so when they drop because they drop all the time um, my edges are covered. So let's get back on topic. The question we got just now um, from Gifty Dankwa 3784. Hello, can you advise me on what fine level should I set the gain if I'm recording in a noisy environment that has loud music? Um, so the first thing I'm going to say is that all video and photo there are standards, there are levels of practice at what we do so we know what to do the next time. However, every single scenario is going to be different. So I would suggest uh, if you have time, when you get to the location, do a quick sound check. Uh, if you're actually running off the microphone on these, just you know tap this on, let it run for like a minute and then throw it into a laptop open it up and listen to it so you can actually hear what the environment sounds like. Uh, number two, if you are recording in an environment where you're supposed to be there, i.e. someone's paid you to shoot an interview or something, you should tell them to turn the music off. Uh, music in the background is not only going to be not fun to edit with, now you can clean it out, but it's also, you can get flagged, and since you don't have a license for that music, it doesn't matter if it accidentally came into your soundtrack or not, uh, into your audio, it's illegal. So be very aware, cut that out, make your final product sound amazing. Uh, something I'm gonna talk about really, uh, kind of at length, <laughs> is the number one thing I always say is shoot and record as clean as possible but you are going to be cleaning it in post anyway. It is extremely rare that you shoot what you shoot, whether it be audio or video, and then deliver that quality. You know, like I don't shoot baked in color unless I know it's something super simple that no one's gonna care about. If it's for a client, I always shoot slog three so I can clean it and grade it in post. Similar to audio, uh, I never use Ever, even for my own personal stuff. I never use the audio from anything, including this, at what it actually sounds like. I'm going to run this through a compressor. I'm going to run this through audio because audio is one of those things, unless you're an audio engineer and really understand audio, which I, I'm i not an audio engineer. I'm a filmmaker videographer. I'm a one-person band most of the time. I have to run audio and video and lighting and direction and cinematography and gaffing and like everything else. Like there's so much stuff that you have to worry about as a videographer that unfortunately you can't learn everything and it tends to drag you down sometimes. But when you have the ability to have someone who is really freaking good at their job and just dedicated to their job, then they can focus on getting you amazing audio. But our friend here says, uh, real quick, uh, the, whenever I record these vlogs and they're like 17 minutes, know that I probably recorded for two hours because I go down rabbit holes of other stuff, so I apologize about that and ahead of time. So our friend here says, um, yes, to be specific, it was an interviews in a noisy area because I was asking whether or not it was like a, a, a concert or something like, like that. And I said, the presenter, the guest, and using these mics 
each for both of them. Uh, and referring to the gain settings on the mic, still a newbie of the tech terminology. So he asked, because I wrote back, um, sorry, I'm getting way, way ahead of myself. So the number one reason you want to use these kind of mics is because they offer a, a technology called 32-bit float. And 32-bit float is basically the audio version of shooting on raw video or raw photo or even film. You have a lot more latitude of stuff to do in post. So when I shoot in film, when I shoot on 16 millimeter and I bring it into post-production, I... Even though I shot it on 4.5 f-stop, like I can adjust that greatly without seeing a lot of degradation. Film is very, very forgiving. Um, same with raw video or raw photo because there's more data. If you use 24-bit uh, audio encoding, it's a compression. You're not allowing the audio to breathe as much. So when you run these recordings, which we're gonna show you in a second, they're automatically recording at 32-bit float. You just have to export it out of the app at 32-bit float. And once you have that 32-bit float, I know I'm saying that a lot, I'm sorry. Uh, once you have that 32-bit float, you have the ability, so if someone's talking really quiet, you can boost that up in post and kill the background noise. Or maybe if they're too loud, you can drop that back down to an adjustable range that sounds pleasant. So even if there's noisy in the background, even if people are talking, definitely kill the music. Definitely kill the music. But even if people are talking in the background or it's noisy, or maybe they're not loud enough, you can still clean that in post. Now, the issue, I'm making it sound like post-production is really easy to clean. It does take time and there's stuff to learn about it. But let's go over what we actually have. So. Uh, I said you should definitely record at 32-bit float, but you should go to the environment to test it out first. Make sure that your audio sounds okay in that environment. So you don't wanna like get there, record it on overblow, like way too high, and then you get it and everything's redlined and, and crushed and sounds awful. Or you don't wanna record it too low and you can't even bring it up because then there's just nasty static sounds you want to be able to have like a nice little balance. So I suggested make sure you get there, record a little bit, listen to it, because every environment is differently, or every environment is different. And then the other thing is always record in 32-bit float. So if you are up to date on the firmware, you're already good. So don't worry about that. But uh, our friend did say, um, I'm, I'm, a tech, I'm, I'm a newbie on the tech terminology. Should I record to 32dB? No, <laughs> 32 decibels is insanely high. Um, when you export your final video, typically you wanna keep the highest points of your audio roughly about negative six dB to negative nine, 12 dB, depending on where it's going to be seen. TV has different standards than online and theaters and yada, yada, yada. I, what I do, and I'm not gonna tell you what you should do, I'm gonna tell you what I do. I keep all my dialogue, all my voices, all my, um, my, my people talking on camera, all my A-roll at negative six. And negative six is still pretty loud. Uh, and then I keep my music about negative 18 to negative 20 in the background, unless I bring that up to be like, oh, the music's really cool. And then I keep that at like negative 12, maybe negative nine, but that should never hit negative six in my opinion, because then you're just blasting out your audience. Uh, zero dB is loud. It is crazy too loud. And actually anything I believe from negative three to zero is redlining and then you're actually crushing your audio and it sounds like shit. So don't record that. When I say you wanna record at a much lower level of dB than you think you need because you can always boost that up in post. Uh, if you have Premiere Pro, I'll walk you through exactly what I do with my audio, but let's walk through um, what I actually do to set this up. So I'm going to plug this in. I need to find a USB that's actually open. Which one's which? There we go. 
Okay, again, I apologize for the no editing, but I wanted to get this done. I wanted to get this online so I could help. Um, let's open up. I'm always bad at finding stuff. Okay, so you open up the app. Uh, this should automatically come up. This, these are all the audio files. Uh, they recorded in e U G G, which is a proprietary thing. And if, uh, something ever corrupts, um, I'll tell you from experience, you can send this in, or you can send the files in to get uncorrupted from road. They're actually really cool about it. So you don't need this. This doesn't matter. Everything we're going to be looking at is in the app. So click on the road wireless go to system that you have. And these are my recordings right here. And over here, can I zoom in? I don't know if I, I can zoom in or not. Yeah, anyway, uh, look closer. <laughs> so right here, it's gonna automatically come up as 24-bit PCM. You wanna connect the 32-bit float. So all the recordings on here are recording at basically raw audio. And you can export at 24-bit or 32-bit, always always export at 32 bit. I suggest always exporting at wave too. Wave is a much bigger, higher quality, better quality sound file. Uh, MP3 is very compressed. It's gonna be a smaller file size, but here's the rub. And especially if you're new to video, uh, get ready to have epic amounts of data. I'm gonna just show you right here. If you, you can see, these are all the hard drives from the past two years of work and you can't even see that on the bottom here is the exact same row of hard drives. These are all uh, anywhere between 14 terabyte and 20 terabyte. These are 20 terabyte. I just filled these up in the last month. <laughs> this is all just backup data. So, and that's just the last two years. I have a gun safe downstairs filled to the brim with hard drives. So. Uh, just realize that you're going to have to have to have a lot of data storage. So don't care about the size of the quality uh, if you can afford it, because it is always better to spend a hundred bucks on a hard drive than six months from now go shit. I downloaded that audio file at low quality. It sounds like ass. The client's actually paying me now to go back and clean it, but you can't because it's compressed and it sounds like crap, but you can go back and clean it if you have the higher quality file. So always think about like the next level and how you can help yourself down the line. So we have the app open here. Um, can we do in the settings? There we go. So I have this set to always record, and I'm sure I've gone over this, but that video was like two years ago. Of course, I didn't translate over. So inside the settings, I always have this set to record because even 90% of the time, I don't run this to my camera. I just use these. I just hit on, I clip it on, and I go, and I sync everything in post afterwards. Uh, I always have it set to broadcast because I want the highest quality and I think, yeah, okay, on, off. Sorry, it, it's been a minute since I changed anything in this. Uh, yeah, okay, I mean, everything's fine. Um, let's go into the other one really. So I'm going to set up the receiver. You can see what I do with the receiver. There we go. Receiver. So I have them as split. So if you are running two different mics or if you're running a mic on two different people, then you can have individual audio from each person. So you can cut back and forth and cut out the sneezes and grunts and everything else. Um, that is really amazing, especially when using multiples of these, but if they're very close together, you're going to get sibilance and sibilance is, or crosstalk. Um, it's, if I'm talking here, it takes, oh, here, like if I'm talking here, it takes a little bit of time for my audio to get here and it takes, someone's talking here, it takes a little bit of time for the audio to get here, uh, with two different mics. And then that distance is even further to the next mic. 
So you're going to hear like this slight nasty echo and you get rid of that by doing uh, merge sometimes, but play around with it. Like I said, everything is totally suggestible. So in here, this is something I did not talk about in the, uh, how I set it up because this is new with, with the firmware. Uh, I have it set up to my camera, the A7S III, and it's a preset built in. So if you see this, I have it at negative 12 dB or negative 6 dB recording inside the uh, recorder itself. So that is pretty freaking loud. Uh, you can do fine here, and if you do fine, I would probably suggest setting it to like negative 18, negative 12. I would not go above negative 12. Uh, backlight, that doesn't really matter. Uh, camera, I like having the camera settings so I know if I need to record into the camera, I can just set my camera to one, to audio level one, and it just, it's beautiful. It sounds good enough as a scratch track, but know this, and this part's really important. If you are recording from your camera on the transmitter, uh, this is the talker. They're talking here. And then, well, I guess this doesn't make sense. I'm the talker talking into the transmitter. And then this is the receiver on top of the camera, you know, camera can. As soon as it gets here and goes into your camera, it is no longer 32-bit float your audio on the camera, on the video file, is not 32-bit float, okay? Unless I am missing something, unless something has changed dramatically with a lot of firmware updates, the audio coming from here can be 32-bit float, but once it comes out of the audio and into your camera, you don't have 32-bit float anymore. So that audio on your camera file can be used as a scratch track, meaning you can sync to it later with the 32-bit float audio from the transmitter, and that's the better quality audio. So is there anything else in here that you need to worry about? If you are going to set to fine, uh, I would do it negative 12, no higher than that. You could probably go to negative 18 and be good. I know you can go lower, but that's crazy low. Um, but make sure you're always doing 32-bit float. Okay. I got to change this back because otherwise <laughs> I'm going to be in trouble. Okay. Uh, so there's that. The other thing that I'm going to quickly talk about because I know this is running long. I'm looking at the clock right, right now. Uh, if you are new to this, the best advice I could give is to practice. You could hear me saying X, Y, Z, and then you do X, Y, Z, and you're like, well, X and Y worked really good, but Z didn't work for me in my case. That's how this job is. You can learn the beginnings of things. You can learn the how to do things, but really you're not going to learn until you're doing it. So when I teach a video class, one of the things I do is I don't let anyone use autofocus. Autofocus makes us lazy. It makes us bad cinematographers uh, because the moment that shot loses focus or you're confident that it's in focus and it's not, you can't use that shot anymore without a very specific reason and then you lose a shot. You should know how to do things before you let something else do it for you. You, you. you know what I mean? It's like when I learned editing, I learned on a computer, but then I learned on a Minolta. I learned how to cut actual film. And then I went back to the computer and I was like, oh my God, everything here makes sense now. Everything is like the bin structure, how things move, how things are... Uh, organized and categorized, everything make, makes sense coming from a film background. So I am going to show you how I clean audio in post. Now, I don't really have an example for this because this was off the cuff, so I'm just going to bring in anything. And please don't judge this as like this is the sound level kind of stuff. So I'm, I'm just bringing in a file. So we are going to create a quick timeline. As you can see from the waveform here, 
Uh, it's loud, okay? So I'm gonna move my photo really quick. <laughs> so over here, uh, we are in Adobe Premiere Pro, just in case, like I, I always edit in Premiere Pro, so I just always assume everyone else does. Uh, over here is your VU meter, okay? Uh, you can remember it as volume units, units of volume, i.e. decibels, okay? Excuse me, I have to sneeze. <coughs> I love recording live. Okay, so as I'm going to play this really quick, uh, you're going to see this jump. It should be in between negative three and negative six. As it can possibly be. Get to know the context. With it. Now, as you can see, it's normalizing at le le level nine, at neg ne ne negative nine. But the highs are in between negative three and six. Uh, normalization is great. That's where you want it to be most of the time. But your highs are where you want it to, like, like in case something goes high. Like I can see right at this beginning here. See how loud those wait. Oh, I don't know if you can see me or not. See, I see how loud those waves are right there. Let's watch the uh, the wave. And here it is. Boom! That went above negative three. But I did that because it's like this loud building car sound. That guy had to be above it and it had to snap your attention. And I didn't mind if it cracked a little because it brought the audience in. I would not do that anywhere else in the video. You do have high points here, but again, it's that sound effect to wake people up. Get up here, get up here. So again, it's that guy screaming and the sound of the car revving in. So you do that to wake people up. That's, that's theory. We'll talk about that some other time if you guys ever want to talk about it. I love film theory and I can talk about it all damn day. So let's get back into this and I'm going to teach you how I clean audio. Uh, this is a bad example. So let's find an actual audio clip real quick. Um, go for a project I'm working on now. Assets, audio. Let's get, uh, there we go. Okay, so this is a, an audio file from an interview. Um, we're gonna kill that top one because that's a merged file, and I'm just gonna show you one track of audio. Oh, I hope it's not a long question. That's so weird. Actually, let me raise the. Can you? The goal is to. Okay, I'm gonna raise up the desk audio a little bit, desktop audio. Okay, so this is an, an interview that I did, and this is just the audio. Um, Make people happy. Like, I love colors. And you have to sync this in post, obviously. Post, I love but as you can see, I have it set to roughly about negative 24, and that's to ensure, because right here, you can see the audio spikes because she yells, or Boy, laughs. There's a, <laughs> there's, there's a lot, I know. <laughs> that hit zero decibels. So since I recorded in 32-bit float, I can clean that alongside this negative 32 audio and make it sound like it's perfectly level with each other. So here is my workflow of how I do this. So I bring this audio in, I make sure it's okay. Parts like this, I like to go in, anything like, sorry, I gotta make sure you can see, see this. Uh, parts like this where the audio is high and you can see the audio clip right there where it's like, the wave goes above the line. I can bring that down, okay? Let's do... Set the audio gain, let's just set it to neg negative three. But if you look here, the audio does actually clip. It actually levels off like a plateau, and that's not good. That means that audio is almost unusable. There's a lot! But since it's so quick, it's not that bad of a thing. So let's set our audio to zero decibel change. And let's just find a normal area here of talking, just so you can see this. Like, I love color. Oh, you, of course you can't even see the, oh, uh, here, I'm gonna put my face here because 
there's no video, so. I love nails. I love to just. She's she's talking normally about negative 30 to negative 24. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go over here to my effects panel and I'm gonna type in multi-band compressor. I, I just type in multi in there. There's only like one or two. So I grab multi-band compressor. I grab it onto the audio file here. I go up to my effects control panel. I hit edit and this little window comes up. I click on the presets, I click broadcast, I go down here to the limiter area, I switch release from 500 to 250, and attack at one. And what the attack does is as soon as it hears something, some audio going through it, it'll attack it in one millisecond versus four. And the release, I want that release to go pretty quick. So I want the effect to die faster than 500 milliseconds, okay? So once you have that set, broadcast, 250 and one we can exit out of that and now watch watch the vu meter just inspire people now we're averaging about negative 15 and not only that but it sounds warmer it sounds more approachable and more human than recorded so uh let me set the desktop audio up so you can hear this uh here is the original audio I love to just inspire people. I found One Stop Beauty. Actually, I didn't find it. My sister did. And then here's it with the multi-brand compressor. Inspire people. I found One Stop Beauty. Actually, I didn't find it. My sister did. So it just sounds more like you're in the room with them. So that's step one. There's a lot more to do with this. Uh, I make sure I get this to a level that I'm happy with. And she texts. Gain-wise. So I hit G on my keyboard, which brings up my audio gain. I can raise this. Let's put this to 5 dB. Fire people. I found One Stop Beauty. Actually, I didn't find it. My sister did. She was driving by and she texted me and let me know, hey, I found I'm hitting negative 9, which I'm actually okay with. So when we get to the louder parts, I can clean that. But negative 9 is a nice base level. So I'm going to just clip this one little audio here instead of making you listen to the whole thing. And then we're going to export this out. I hit Control M on my keyboard, which brings up the export settings. Uh, go over here to the format, go down to Wave, remember Wave. Um, I'm going to export this out just somewhere, just so you can hear what this sounds like. Basically, you're exporting this audio out to bring it into another program to have it cleaned up and bring it back in. You can use bridge, you can use different programs together with each other, but you run the risk of moving one file out of one folder one time and everything goes fucking haywire. So I like creating new files along the way. Again, I don't care about data size. I care about quality control and I care that I can go back and change things when I need to. And if I do change things, if I move folders around, I know where everything's going to be. So did I hit export? Of course I did not hit export. So it exported. Uh, let's open up the computer really quick, open up where I saved it, it's right here. So I use a program uh, if you are an Adobe user, you can use the Adobe Podcast AI Enhanced Speech. So I'll bring this over. I drop it into here. And what this is going to do is it cleans your audio amazingly well. Like it's almost too good. I know you can do this in the new updates of Premiere, but again, I like having specific files. I like having multiple files so if things go wrong, I can fix them. But if things go wrong in a transition inside the editing software, uh, you have to go back to the beginning of that file to figure out where it is and if something moved, thing, again, things can go haywire. There is no wrong way or right way to edit. I like to edit the way I do because most projects I don't just edit and I'm done. Most projects I'll come back to after like six months, two years, four years for a client and then when they want a new edit. So once that is done doing, check this out. My career goal is to truly make people happy. Like I love colors, I love nails, I love to just inspire people. I found One Stop Beauty. Actually, I didn't find it, my sister did. 
Man, she was driving by and she... that, that sounds good it, it's it's almost too much compressed so what we can do is we can uh drop the level here because you don't want it to sound perfect perfect makes it sound weird he texted me and let me know. So you want to drop the strength of this down a little bit. Oh, hey, I found this found one stop beauty. Actually, I didn't find it. My sister did. I can still hear the echo in the background. So I want to kill that. Let's raise this up to 73. She was driving by and she texted me and let me know. Hey, I found the school. Look, that's nice. So we're going to download this. Uh, don't use this software with uh, music. <laughs> Uh, bring that back over. I'm going to bring that file back into my Premiere. I will... Oh, nope, that's not it. Where is it? Whoop, whoop. Where'd it go? Did I close it out? I totally closed it out. I'm wasting your time. Hold on. There we go. Enhanced. Bum, 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 bum. Uh, I'm going to put this underneath just so you can hear the difference. Okay, so here's the original. My career goal. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. Let's, uh, let's actually do this one at a time so you can actually hear everything. Okay. So we're going to solo the first track. This is without compression. There's no multi-band compression on this. We just raised the gain a little bit. Like, I love colors. I love nails. I love to just inspire people. I found One Stop Beauty. Actually, I didn't find it. My sister did. Okay. This is the original audio plus five gain and multi-band compressor. Inspire people. I found One Stop Beauty. Actually, I didn't find it. My sister did. She was okay. Now here is multi-band compression and Adobe Podcast voice enhancer. Inspire people. I found One Stop Beauty. Actually, I didn't find it. My sister did. It's so nice. Now there is one more thing I do. You can leave it here and it sounds great. I like to right click on it, edit the clip in Adobe Audition. Uh, I created my own preset, which includes a tube modeled compressor and a hard limiter. So for those peaks, those high points that we were talking about earlier, I can run both of these. And just because I created the, the preset doesn't mean you can't either. Literally, all you have to do is bring in tube modified compressor, sorry, tube modeled compressor and hard limiter. And you have the exact same thing I have. I just have it set as one thing because it makes it easier. I hit apply. It goes over everything. It's done. Really make people happy. And as you can see what it did, see these peaks right, right here? See how high those are? Now, granted, those aren't that high, but still we want to average those out. So I'm going to hit this and it averages out all those high points except for the super high points, but it's not going to sound bad. If I hit save, it's going to save the file back into Pre Premiere, and it's actually going to make a new wave file inside your folder setup. My career goal is to truly make people happy. Like I. So from here, we can kill the ground noise, but most of that has already been killed through. Actually, I did this the wrong way. This is where I would edit it, but I'm not going to edit it. You want to run this with, uh, you want to first do the multiband compression. Then you want to put it into Adobe Audition. Then you put it into, you export it out as a wave. Then you run it through uh, Adobe Podcast. Then you bring it in. So I did it one step around. So basically, it's going to sound like this but remember that original file that original file was like really crazy it had those like really high peaks bringing it into adobe audition is going to level those out and then when you bring it into adobe podcast it's going to uh clean all that up so yeah do it in multi-band compression change the gain then uh open in adobe audition in Adobe Audition, you want to 
run tube modeled compressor, then hard limiter, save it. It'll come back in here, export that out as a wave, bring that into Adobe Podcast. I love colors. I love nails. I love to just inspire people. I found One Stop Beauty. Actually, I didn't find it. My sister did. She was driving by and she texted me. And you have super nice sounding audio versus. And let me know, hey, I found the school, look into it. It took me a few weeks, but I reached out to BB. So actually, if I just raise this up a lot, you're gonna hear massive echo. It took me a few weeks, but I reached out to BB and I locked it in the same day. Within 20 minutes, I was enrolled. And let me know, hey, I found the school, look into it. It took me a few weeks, but I reached out to BB and I locked it in the same day within 20 minutes. Like, in this that is crazy, nasty echo in that room we were shooting. Yep. So let, let, let's hear it after the podcast cleans it up. To me and let me know, hey, I found the school, look into it. It took me a few weeks, but I reached out to BB and I locked it in the same day. Within 20 minutes, I was enrolled. Uh, that's awesome. All right, dude, uh, this has gone on way longer than I expected. I apologize about that. Uh, I am going to let you go. Have an amazing day. Uh, let me know if you ever have any questions or anyone out there ever has, has any questions about this. Um, we're all new at some point in our careers. At no point does someone just pick up a camera or audio recording equipment and go, I got this. You know, I know everything. Uh, everything's a journey and everything starts with a step and every step creates another step and every step creates walking and sure you'll stumble but you don't learn to run until you stumble you can see other people running you can hear the theory of running but you don't know until you stumble until you fall you don't learn you don't grow until you fail a couple times and failing's not a bad thing oh my god like we're we're, we're, we're taught as a culture to like hate the idea of fucking up it's okay. That's how you grow. You know, like when you work out, like when you go to a gym, you're literally shredding your muscles. That's why they call shredding. You're tearing your muscles so they can grow bigger. You need to be broken down before you can get better. And that's what we're striving to do. We're every day, we're trying to be better. And that's why I end every video I ever make with a hope of positivity for you and something to believe in for myself while hopefully guiding others. So today, do something awesome. Go practice. Go run around and check audio levels in different locations. See what makes noise different. Uh, don't use audio autofocus. Learn how to manual focus and then use autofocus when you have to. And lastly and most importantly, and I say this mostly for myself, but I hope other people feel it be better. Thank you for the comment. And I hope you have an outstanding shooting experience in everything you do. I'm gonna stop talking. I'm a Midwesterner. I'm doing the Midwestern goodbye. I'm gonna go now. Bye.